Hello, my name is Mars, and welcome back to the Crimson Diamond. It's been a little while since I last played this, a, a week and a half, I would say. Um, and I'm, I'm trying to remember what I was doing. I know I was, I was zeroing in on Nessa as our main suspect for both uh, Margot's murder, which we need to present evidence uh, about to the ranger and Evan's disappearance, which we need to bring our findings on to Nathan. And we needed to find her shoe size and we needed to get a jar that had the poison in it out of the river. And both of those things are kind of stumping me. Um, I want to take a look at the blue trunk because I was taking a look at my notes and it mentioned that Ranger Murdoch was trying to get into the blue trunk so maybe if I examine it it'll look different. It's locked, okay. Yeah. No way he was getting into that, okay. The one thought that I kind of had is that I rem I was re-watching an old episode, and it mentioned something about plush carpets, which is something I haven't tried looking for shoe prints in. Now, this mention of plush carpets was not in Nessa's room, but she does have a rug in here. There's a multicolored rectangular rug under the bed, and a circular rug creates a nice sitting area. Look rectangular rug <laughs> examine rug okay so not that maybe because she is currently in Margot's room maybe there's a footprint left here um mm-hmm Look rug. Examine carpet. No. Okay. Okay, so there's no looking at Nessa here. We can't even look around the room, which is frustrating. So how do we distract her. That that would be my first order of business would be to distract Nessa somehow. Oh right, and we need to find whose button that is. That too, that's right. Maybe I should go around looking at people's clothes. Um Knickerbockers and sensible shoes. What's in your sketchbook? Oh, I'm just sketching a little to calm down after an important encounter with Albert. Ooh, that sounds juicy. I don't know what his problem is. He stormed into our bedroom and yelled at me for no reason. He seemed upset about the map I was looking at, so I burned it in the fireplace. I've had it with these unpleasant people. I look forward to moving on when I can. The Fieldstone fireplace, yada yada. The map is on fire. Um, soak map. I have water. Some of the rock salt doesn't seem to have melted. Strange. Oh, okay. So we took the rock salt out of the bag of salt that seemed to have diamonds in it. We melted the salt in the water and some of it didn't melt. You remove the undissolved rocks and put them in your pocket. Okay, so I was wondering when that would be important. Now, now can you take the map? You take the map out of the fireplace. All right. Can we take a look at this map? And also, can we inspect this? These tiny colorless minerals from the salt sample aren't salt as they didn't dissolve in water. The insoluble crystals look like little octahedrons, but these are a little too small for me to examine it properly with my loops. 
I'll need to take these back to the museum and get them under a microscope. Interesting. And what about this map? The map is slightly charred and damp, but is still mostly intact. This is a circled location on the map. It's the Sioux Locks. Why would Albert be upset by a map with the Sioux Locks circled? I really hope I get to see them. It's one of the greatest public works projects of the past century. Okay. Is Albert in his room? Not there. I forgot to lock my door again. I don't know about that, Nancy. I'm a meteorologist, not a civil engineer. Maps. Why are you asking me about maps? Okay. All right. Where the hell would I find some shoes of yours, Nessa? This is really, really vexing me. You were at the gazebo earlier. Could you have left some shoe prints there? I, I don't know. Okay, this is the room where a plush carpet was mentioned. The parlor is freshly decorated with elaborate wallpaper and a cushy carpet. Wait a second, where are the Jordan almonds? The plush carpet has a simple pattern woven into it. Its colors perfectly complement the room. Okay. No Jordan almonds. Weird. Well, because we took them all. We took some. I thought I was onto something when it said carpet dot dot dot. All right. Let's try the gazebo. Nope, it wouldn't benefit. Okay. So how can we definitively prove that some footprints belong to Nessa? Hmm. <clears throat> this is where the scuff marks lead. Hold on, size check. Ah. I'll need to investigate Nessa's long skirt. Um, yeah. <sighs> Can we investigate the scuff marks again? Okay, yeah, they're made by... Um... Possibly a woman size 8. Which are obviously Nessa's. Because all the other women in this game have... Because her hair is right there, and all the other women in this game have different size feet. Can I look at my own shoes? <laughs> what size are my own shoes? Ugh. Okay. And the other thing we really, really need to do is get that jar out of the river. Okay. Um, how about we Tie rope to tree? Yes! You tie the rope around the tree. Tie rope to Nancy. Yes! Okay. Ah, I'm not walking around with this rope tying around me. Take jar. Yes! I'm smart. I was like, a safe way to approach. What if we secure ourselves? You take the glass jar. Yes! 
That just randomly occurred to me. All right. Retrieve the glass jar. Look at the jam jar. Inside is a damp strip of flypaper. This looks like one of Jack's jam jars. Closer inspection reveals a white powder residue at the bottom of the jar, a strip of damp flypaper inside the jar, and a small oily spot on the outside of the jar. Um, dust jar? Take fingerprint from jar. You're already carrying the jam jar that has the fingerprint on it. Um, compare fingerprints. Evan's fingerprint on the jam jar. Oh no, from the drinking glass, crystal decanter. The fingerprint on the glass jar belongs to Nessa. Okay. Are there any footprints around here? Nope. Oh, untie. Yay. Okay. Now what about clothes? While we're over here, let's go see Nathan. And we can test this theory. Oh! Um... The metal button... Okay, so we can't compare the button to... Uh, Nathan. Nathan's clothes, because he won't let us into the smokehouse. Um... Oh, we do know that Nancy wasn't here. Um, plush carpet. The curvaceous pattern on the carpet has been rudely interrupted by an assortment of discarded papers. Look, papers? The contents of the desk have been strewn all over the carpeted floor. Maybe she stepped on one. At a glance, the papers are old guest receipts from the Lodge's glory days, as well as some general bookkeeping. Someone has inconsiderately stepped on some of the papers, too. What a mess. Okay. Footprint. Look. Footprint. Someone has stepped on the document scattered over the lush carpet and has created a very clear imprint of their shoes. Ah! I already know Kimi's shoe size, so this shoe print must belong to Nessa. These shoe prints definitely came from a woman's shoes, judging from the heel, and none of the men have feet nearly this small. Hmm, I'd say these shoe prints are a size 8. Nessa's shoe print matches one of the shoe prints I found outside the smokehouse. Now that I've collected all the shoe sizes of everyone in the lodge who could have made those shoe prints out by the smokehouse, I can definitively say that Nessa had something to do with her brother's disappearance. Fantastic! I've gotten everyone's shoe sizes. Yay! I never thought it would. Corvus wears size 14. He was involved in the altercation at the jetty. Nessa and Corvus's footprints were found leading away from the jetty, not to mention their shoe prints are all around the smokehouse. According to what I've deduced, Nessa and Corvus attacked Mr. Richards the, at the jetty and dragged him into the smokehouse. Their shoe prints are all over the jetty and leading to the smokehouse. The scuff marks I found came from rubber-soled shoes, of the kind that Mr. Richards wears. No one else at the lodge wears shoes or boots with rubber soles. Some of Nessa's hair was caught in a tree between the jetty and the smokehouse. That's definitely unusual. Nessa and Corvus were discussing something about a will, but whose? Oh, but I remember overhearing a conversation between them about looking for Evans and Nessa's father's will. Could this have something to do with that? I'm satisfied to, with my investigation so far. It's time to go inside the smokehouse and share what I've learned with Nathan. Upon closer inspection, you think you can barely discern a couple of oily spots on one of the papers. Well, well, you're reluctant to soil the papers with soot, but you decide the situation merits it. Nancy, so proper. Okay. 
compare fingerprints on paper. Compare fingerprints. Um, one of these fingerprints I lifted from the documents in the study belongs to Mr. Richards, which is as it should be, but the other fingerprint belongs to Nessa. Okay, but not surprising. Can we compare the button to people's clothes now? I, I don't know. Um, what about the ranger? Can I show the ranger the jar? He's in this room, right? Oh, pardon me. Good evening, Miss Maple. I'm just getting settled in for the night. Show jar. Okay. <laughs> Look at him like sh wiggling his feet. Ask Ranger about Margot. I'll examine Margot's body tomorrow morning. According to Jack, she had some health if issues, which probably contributed to her death. I'll be filling out a death certificate and notifying her next of kin. Although Jack told me that she doesn't really have any. Hmm. Do I have anything helpful to tell Ranger Murdoch about Margot's death or my investigation in it? Tell Ranger about flypaper? The flypaper in the lodge contains arsenic. Most flypaper does, Nancy. It's a very effective poison. I should tell them about this jam jar I found. Tell about jam jar. I found this jar floating in the water by the waterfall. It looks like someone was trying to dispose of it, but it got caught in the rocks. There's a white residue and a strip of damp flypaper inside. White residue? Maybe it's dried soap? I don't think so. This flypaper's got arsenic in it. I think the residue is actually arsenic. I believe someone was soaking the flypaper in water to extract the arsenic. Who would do such a thing? I witnessed Nessa pouring the contents of her silver flask out into the grass. She could have used that flask to store water that has been adulterated with arsenic. I found Nessa's fingerprint on the outside of the jar. She definitely touched it. Why would Nessa do such a thing? I think Nessa poisoned Margot. She was afraid her brother would bequeath the lodge and lands to Margot and not to her. I see. That's a very serious allegation. Do you have anything else to tell me about your investigation? Hmm. Okay. Does she have anything else to say? I smell garlic on Margot's breath. Do you think that might be significant? Mm -mm, that could be significant. We'll look into it. I know that the flypaper here at the lodge contains arsenic. If Margot was poisoned, the killer could have somehow used the flypaper I found. I should tell Ranger Murdoch about Margot's illness. Tell a ranger about Milness. I've examined Margot's body and made some interesting observations about the state of her health before her death. It's fairly unusual that Margot would have this kind of stin lesion. These don't look like bug bites or anything else I can easily identify. Hmm, yes, I agree with you on that. What about Margot's hair? I don't think allergies would account for the poor condition of Margot's hair. It's brittle and seems to be falling out, creating thinning and balding areas on her scalp. But I'm no doctor. Maybe taking some of her hair to a laboratory for analysis would be fruitful. You mentioned a garlic scent around the body? Yes, I noticed that near Margot's mouth. That could be a number of things, the most likely of which is that she ate garlic shortly before her death. Uh, yes, I suppose so. I never asked her or anyone else about garlic. That could be useful information. Margot suffered from aches and pains that had gotten more acute recently. That would be suspicious. Very well observed, Miss Maple. You would do well as a detective. Thanks! Your findings are very helpful. I'll collect my own evidence and make my own inquiries. Thank you very much. You can leave this with me now. You're welcome. I'm happy to help. Oh, I didn't think to ask anyone about garlic. Um, successfully investigated and reported, reported Margot's death. We don't need to ask anyone about garlic, I guess. <laughs> ask about garlic? Garlic is rather too strong for my palate. Oh, Kimi, Kimi is a-sleeping. Okay. Nathan, I guess we're going to you. I didn't look into the button. I hope that's all right. Does this 
this is not the smokehouse. Smokehouse is down here. Nathan, I have a theory about what's happened to Evan. I'm listening. There are shoe prints all over the jetty leading into the smokehouse. Yes, I saw those, but I have no idea who those could belong to. I do! I did a bit of detective work and learned the shoe sizes of everyone at the lodge. You did? I certainly did! She's so proud of herself. And according to my findings, I've concluded that Nessa and Corvus dragged Mr. Richards off the jetty and into the smokehouse. That makes a lot of sense to me, Nancy, but where is he now? That's what we need to find out. You're absolutely right about that. Please let me take a look in here and see what I can find. You've done very well, Nancy. Maybe you can figure out where Evan is now. So far, I've come up empty-handed. Thanks, Nathan. I'll try not to let you down. If you find anything of significance, let me know as soon as possible. Will do. Oh, one more thing. Yes, Nancy? Nessa seems to be desperately looking for something. I'm not sure what. She's made a mess of the study. There are papers all over. I think it has something to do with a will. I heard them talking about it in the parlor last night. A will? Come to think of it, they were discussing Evans and Nessa's father's will. That was after dinner yesterday. I need to go talk to Jack about all of this. Meet us in the study when you're finished here. You can tell us all about this airset's will in the mineralogical report then. Good luck, Nancy. Good luck to you, too. Okay, what have we here? When I leave, there's no telling who could come here and tamper with the scene inside. The wall of the smokehouse. Nessa and Corvus. Finding finger fingerprints would be great, but there aren't any soothed surfaces in here. Okay. Look. Floor. You can barely make out some yellow fibers on the floor of the smokehouse. Do I also see some crumbs? Okay. The fibers have come from a woven, woven hempen rope, probably due to friction. Could it be that Mr. Richards was tied up here in the smokehouse? Uh-oh. And what else was on the floor? Examine crumbs. With the aid of a loop, you conclude that the crumbs are probably from the thumbprint cookies you saw Jack baking earlier. I can even see that some of the crumbs have bright red raspberry jam on them. Who would bring thumbprint cookies into the smokehouse? Albert? He did really love those cookies. Okay. Symbol. Low on the wall and under the table. The symbol appears to be a circle within a circle. The smaller red circle is copiously filled in with the red substance. Uh-oh. It's definitely not paint. It's sticky, drippy red, and a bit chunky. Eek! Um, do I have anything I could, like... Take the... Could it be blood from, like, the meat that's hanging on the wall? Um, colorful shards and debris cover the table. Inspect table. Jagged fragments of Jordan almonds scattered all over the table. Why in the world would Jordan almonds be in the smokehouse? And how did they manage to break them? They look incredibly appetizing to you. Um... Inspecting the Jordan almond fragments through your loop, you can see conchoidal fractures in the candy shell that remind you of the sharpest obsidian. Shiny like obsidian, too. Eek! Hmm. Take almonds? You remove some of the Jordan almond fragments from the table, taking great care not to pierce your skin on the jagged pieces. Okay. So we have them in our inventory. They're wickedly sharp. Okay. Let's look at the symbol again. Do we, can we like compare it with something? Okay, what's in the barrel? OK. 
Okay, let's look around again. Pot. Um, inspect the pot. Okay. Inspect paint. Take paint. <sighs> okay, let's look at the symbol again. Like, um, what about the salt? Okay, take salt. You can take more salt, I guess. Um, okay. Good to know. Take fibers. They aren't worth taking. Um, take crumbs. You don't want them in your pocket. There are bits of jam on them, too. Sticky and itchy. No thanks. Huh. Huh. I feel like we need to, like, scrape the... Um... Scrape symbol? It feels like you expect it would. Um... Taste? Simple? Seriously questioning your own judgment, you crane your neck towards the wall and stick out your tongue. I'm guessing it's jam. You gingerly touch the tip of your tongue to the smokehouse wall. Oh, tastes like raspberry jam. I thought so. Smokehouse symbol identified as raspberry jam. Can we leave yet? Okay. I don't think I've... I need a way to f tie Nessa or Corvus to the scene. Um, um, you carefully dust the Jordan almond fragments from fingertips. And amazingly, you're able to recover a partial fingerprint from one of the larger pieces of Jordan Almond. Okay. Um. Okay. Compare fingerprints. Nessa is the one who crushed these Jordan Almonds in the smokehouse. Okay, so we... Aha! I think I figured it out. Nessa crushed the Jordan Almonds on the table. But why? I have no idea. Are Jordan almonds particularly dangerous to anyone in the lodge? Oh, an allergy? I should ask around. Judging from the frayed rope fibers, Mr. Richards could have been tied up in the smokehouse after he disappeared from the jetty. I think Mr. Richards partially freed himself and painted a symbol with raspberry jam. He took care to conceal the symbol under the table. It could indicate where he was taken next. The symbol looks like the thumbprint cookies that I saw Jack baking, and their middles were filled with raspberry jam. So, the kitchen? I remember Jack saying that Mr. Richards likes to stash the cookies in his pockets. And I did find cookie crumbs on the floor in the smokehouse. The symbol on the wall of the smokehouse is clearly made out of Jack's thumb thumbprint cookies. There are cookie crumbs all over the floor, and the jam is definitely Jack's raspberry jam. Maybe Jack or someone else would know what the symbol means. I should ask around. I should talk to Nathan and Jack about all of this. All right. I think I'll do that now. I feel on a roll. That's been a very good episode. I was scared I was going to be stuck on these things forever, but no, I figured them all out. Where did they say they were going to be? In the study. There they are. Oh, yeah. Nessa brought some Jordan Noms into the lodge and put them in a bowl in the parlor. She knows Mr. Richards is allergic to nuts, ever since they were kids. Pretty inconsiderate, if you ask me. Hmm. Mr. Richards is allergic to nuts. Could it be Nessa was trying to weaponize them to use against him? 
Maybe that's why Nessa brought the German, German almonds in the first place. She could have been scheming this entire time. Um, talk to Nathan. Um, ask about symbol. Ask Jack about the symbol. Jack, I saw a strange symbol in the smokehouse. I think Mr. Richards was kept there for a bit before being moved somewhere else. I was hoping you know what the symbol means. It's a circle within a circle. The innermost circle is filled with red. Red? You mean like blood? Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to scare you. The red color is actually raspberry jam. Well, why didn't you say so? Whoa. The symbol is painted with raspberry jam and is kind of round. Reminds me of the thumbprint cookies I baked for Mr. Richards. He can never remember the Swedish name for him. Hallengrata. It means raspberry cave. Raspberry cave? Like a mine? Like a garnet mine? Uh-oh. Okay, so he's in the garnet mine. Um, you breathlessly tell Nathan and Jack your theory about what happened to the smokehouse, ending with your belief that Mr. Richards was taken to the garnet mine. You think Mr. Richards was taken to the garnet mines? Those have been sealed shut for decades. Which makes them a perfect place to hide someone. Hmm. Uh-oh. We should drive out there and check, just in case. I agree. It'll take some time to prep the automobile to the carriage house. I'll meet you there. I'm gonna fetch Ranger Murdoch. Stay put here in the lodge, Nancy, in case Mr. Richards comes back. Hmm. So all the helpful people are, are leaving to go to the mines. Great. Kimi and Albert are... Uh tangential to all of this, I feel. They're both definitely up to something, but especially Albert, but uh, they're not, they are not being uh, cooperative in general. And Corvus and Nessa are the bad guys, so. Well, I am certainly not going to just wait around here. I'll convince Jack and Nathan to take me with them. They need all the help they can get. But before I head out, should I check in with the other folks in the lodge? Probably should, but we'll do that next time. Ooh, I'm very satisfied with my progress in this one. I was so scared I was going to be stuck forever. Um, but until next time, I have been Mars, and I will be back with more The Crimson Diamond. <laughs>